Hey there YouTube, I just did a Control Net 1.1 update and full install video that was pretty long and I actually had to cut out a lot of the good stuff so I'm going to turn those clips into full videos. Yeah that's how crazy Control Net version 1.1 is, there's so much depth to it that it's going to take full videos to explain different models. If you need to install Control Net version 1.1, check out the video I just made, it's in the video description. The installation part's about 5 minutes long and if you just need an update from version 1 to 1.1, That'll take you about like two minutes. Let's take a closer look at the tile model. There are plenty of examples in the ACS field, lightly blob, but let's do one live. If you're not familiar with what tile is, it allows you to do some 8K renders as high as 8196 by 8196, which is humongous. This tool is able to work around limitations by splitting up the pictures into individual tiles. So you can upscale each one individually. And if you try to do that right now, just normally without that, doing a bunch of 2048 pictures, you're just gonna get multiple images of the same thing. So this can split it up 16 times and then upscale in 16 different areas and combine it into one single picture. Do a really massive upscale, which will also take massive time. So just keep that in mind. Even with some beefy hardware, it's going to take a while. I actually ran out of VRAM, but they have some things to work around it too as well. So um, I'll show you that in a second. The reason why this tile upscale needs a video on its own is also because it's not as simple as going to the extras tab and upscaling or going into control net and choosing tile. It needs a lot more explaining because it works through scripts from compatible upscale extensions such as ultimate sd upscale and tile diffusion vae it's heavy i'm going to show you how to install both of these but we're only going to play around with the ultimate sd upscale for this video i don't think i know enough about the tile vae and i'm not getting good enough results not really sure what i'm doing wrong so i'll come back with another video for that when i know more about it if you want to take a closer look at some of the outputs that the tile model can give you you can check out the is last feels nightly blob and they have a lot of examples and good explanation of those examples on there but let's do one live do it live i can i'll write it and we'll do it live whoa okay before we do that, let's install the Ultimate SD Upscaler. So it's pretty easy. This one, you don't even need to grab a link. You just go to your extensions tab again, then click on the available sub tab. Now click on the big orange load from, then you get an error just like me, crap. Then click on the big orange load from button. Then look for Ultimate SD Upscaler in here. There's a little search box in the top now. You can just type in Ultimate and it should be the only thing that pops up. Now click on install and it should take like two or three seconds. And then go to the installed sub tab. And now look for it here. It'll say Ultimate Upscale for Automatic 11. 11 so it doesn't say the same exact name which is strange but that's the one right there so now just click on check for updates all right now just click apply and restart all right awesome now you have the ultimate sd upscaler let's get the other one the vae tile upscaler open up your stable diffusion and then copy the link in my description the pk piku lily what's up with these guys names they're always some crazy name piku lily something 2015 multi-diffusion upscaler <laughs> My Illudium Q36 Explosive Space Modulator. Now we're just going to click on the extensions tab and then we're going to click on install from URL. And then right inside that box where it says URL for extensions, Git repository, just go ahead and paste the link for the Pikili, Pikul, Pikuili to 2015. Put that in there and then click on the big orange install button. Don't worry about the local directory name. It's going to make its own. Now all you got to do is to go to the extension sub tab installed. When you're in there, make sure that everything's checkmarked and click on check for updates and then click on apply and restart UI. All right. So it's going to restart for you. And then when you come back in, it should be installed. You're going to need one more additional tool and it's called ultra four times sharp. And I'm going to put the download link in the description and it's a little bit different than your typical hugging face site, but you're basically going in that link, grabbing the file and throwing it into your model's eSargan folder. There'll be a link in the video description for it and you'll just download it and you'll get this zip file right here. Just open up the zip file and you're only going to need this file right here, which is the four times ultra sharp dot PTH. The rest of it, just don't worry about it. Forget about it. Go into your stable diffusion folder, models, and then go into eSargan. Double click it and just drag it right into that models folder for ESRGAN. And that's it. Now you have the four times ultra sharp. You might have to restart to see it though. Next, you want to go to the Hugging Face Control Net site with, with all the models for Control Net and just check if your tile version is the most up-to-date one. If not, just download the tile.pth by clicking on the down arrow. Then put your control net tile model in the stable diffusion extensions, SD web UI control net, and then here in the models folder, make sure that's the correct models folder because there's 
quite a few of them in Stable Diffusion. As you can see, I already have mine here, so I'm not going to do it twice. And that's all you need. So just go back to your web UI tech user bat file to open Stable Diffusion. And let's get back in and do some upscaling. First thing to note, and very important before doing any of this, is that this is all done in image to image. If you're not in that tab, you're probably a little bit confused right now because you can't find anything. So make sure you're in the image to image tab. I say this because upscales are normally done in the extras tab, but this is going to be a little bit different. So uh, with that being said, drag and drop your image into the image to image box and then drag and drop another image into the control net image box at the bottom. Now, don't get confused about having two images. Control net is just for the poses. And in this instance, it's the frame of the picture. So we can divide it up into tiles. So we can do some parallel upscales for a single image consecutively. I Probably that was probably a little confusing. In other words, it's going to divide your picture up into tiles and then put them in a queue and do them one by one. So it can upscale each one and work around the limitations of your GPU. This is very important because otherwise this wouldn't be possible. I mean, it already takes a long time with this process. All right. So the very first thing we're going to do is a latent upscale because our image is pretty bad. And normally you wouldn't start with an image as bad as mine, but I'm trying to show you something. So let me show you the image that I chosen. All right, here it is. And so let me zoom in just so you can see the quality that we're working with. And uh, you can't even make any of the details of the eyes or anything, the mouth. So this is going to be quite the the task. The hands look like, uh, I don't know how to describe that. Looks like something. All right, let's close that out. Now that you know what we're working with, and then open image to image, and then just drag that picture in the image to image window. There we go. Now I'm going to click on interrogate clip, and then I'm going to add a negative prompt. So I'm going to click in a negative prompt, and I have my own here, which is a deliberate negative prompt that I got from Civit AI. I did a whole video on that on custom models and custom negative embeddings. If you want to check that out. So I'll just click on that and close this back up. That's the extra networks tab, by the way, if you didn't know. And this is where you can hold all your embeddings, LoRa's and custom models. You can find them here. Cool. Now we got the messed up picture in there. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. So we're going to do a little bit of a latent upscale. So I'm going to double the size first. And we're not even going to touch control net first because I want a good picture before we start upscaling. And I'm going to try it with 0.4 denoising strength. I wouldn't go above 0.5. Typically, a picture is not this bad. And if it's not this bad, you're usually doing like 0.15 to 0.20. But this picture is pretty smudgy. So um, I think even 0.5 would work. Anything over 0 0.5, 0 0.6, you're going to get a totally different image. Cool. That's all we're changing for now. So I just double the size and then I put the denoising strength to 0.41. So let's see what that gives us. All right. So that's much better, but I think we can do better. So I'm going to mess around with it a little bit more. I'm going to add some words into the prompt. I'm going to put beautiful eyes and mystical energy and lightning. All right, so I added some additional words and actually increased the denoising strength to 0.45. Let's see what we get. Okay, that was a little bit too much. She's in a different stance now. I could actually put on control net now to stop that, but uh, let's just turn it down a little bit. So this is going to take some testing to get the exact picture you want. And I came up with this one that I really like, and there's a lot more detail than the other pictures. And this one looks really good too. And I like the armor and I'd like to put this armor on her. I'll figure that out in a second, but let me show you something. So you don't have to sit here putting denoising, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Let's just do all of it and automate it using scripts. Scroll to the bottom and in scripts, choose an XYZ plot. And then we're, for the X plot, we're going to choose denoising. And we're going to use the simplest formula we can use. So it's just going to be the range multiplied by as many variations as you want. So for denoising, it's 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. And I'm just going to put some brackets and put the number five inside. So that's five variations of 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. So that's one way to do it. There is a lot of different ways, but that's not what this video is about. And we're just trying the simplest way to test this. So let me try it out. As you can see, it gave me a little film strip here of all the different denoising strengths. So you don't have to sit there trying each one. You can actually create like 50 pictures and just come back and see which denoising strength you like the best. As you can see at 0.5, I mean, it looks a little bit better with the armor, but then it's just kind of the pose is gone. You could turn on control net to stop that. Just for fun, using the same method, let's do a latent upscale on Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. So I made a few changes to make it look cooler, but check it out. So you can see all the different results with all the different types of denoising strength that it chose. All right, so let's upscale this. So the first thing we got to do is go into control net. So scroll down just a little bit and go into control net and then drag in a duplicate of that image that you just created. All right, so I uploaded that right there. And very important, you have to click on enable control net or it's not going to do anything at all. So make sure you do that. On preprocessor, we're going to choose tile. So tile is at the bottom. Tile resample. The next is the model. The model also has to be tile. And that one's the third one from the top here. Make sure your version says 11F 
E or higher. So before that, it wasn't as great. All right, so tiles the third one from the top, just select that. And now I'm gonna choose pixel perfect. So I'll choose the correct kind of resolution best for what I'm trying to do. And if you run out of VRAM, you could click on low VRAM or you can increase the downsampling rate. So I ran out of VRAM on my eight gigabyte card and I actually put this up to four and it was able to do it. I have a new card now, so I think I could handle this. So I'm just going to try it at one. It'll be faster. The more you you up this, the, the longer it's going to take, but the more it's going to help with your VRAM. So, all right, cool. So now we're going to go down a little bit and we're going to change the scripts that we have from XYZ plot to ultimate upscale. Now, don't get that confused with SD upscale. There's by standard, there's an SD upscale. We want ultimate SD upscale. Remember the four times ultra sharp that we installed earlier? Click on that. And I'm going to leave everything else alone. I don't know too much about it. I actually tried messing with these and it didn't it didn't really work very well, the seams fix. And last but not least, where it says target size type, we actually want to choose scale from image size. This will ignore the image to image resolution settings. So just go ahead and do that and it's gonna be easier to work with. You won't have to set it each time. Now the scale, this is where it's gonna make or break it for, for most people. Now tile and ultimate upscale will allow you to put this in a queue, but that doesn't mean you're immune to crashing from low VRAM errors. And there's two ways you can approach this. Some people like to scale it by two and then they'll iterate and iterate and iterate. Let's just do four at a time. So I'm going to go all the way up to four and we'll do it that way. So I'm going to scroll up and generate. But if you wanted to, you can just start all the way at 16, but it's going to take about 20 to 30 minutes to do that. So you don't want to end up with a bad picture and then think, oh man, I got to like start over again. So you definitely want to do increments. Just how many increments is up to you. I'm going to do four. All right. So we now have our result and this is our 4096 by 4096 picture. And I forgot to lower the denoising strength, but it worked out okay. And control net kept it together. So it didn't change too much, but I really like the details on the character. So let me open it up in a picture so we could zoom in and see the quality and look how clean that is. Now let's look at the older picture. Still pretty good, but you can see it start to fall apart when you get close to the face like this. And you can see all the different pixelation going on, but um, still a pretty nice picture. Probably from here, you don't see any pixelation. But compare that to the 4096 one here, and like you can go way in close, and I don't see anything yet. The details are amazing, even at this range. But what if we wanted to enhance this even further? Let's double the size of this. So just remove the older image by clicking X over there, then drag the new one over. And there it is. So now we're going to work on this and double the size of this. Now it's already 4096, so I don't want to go times four anymore. I just want to go times two. So I'm going to move the scale down to two. And this is going to take a long time. It's going to take about 20 minutes. This time I'm going to lower the denoising strength because I really don't want too much change. Put it on two. All right. So I'm going to click generate and come back in like 20 minutes. And if you don't get any feedback, you want to look in here just to make sure things are moving and that you're getting some progress bars. Um, if it says out of VRAM error, then you can go ahead and do the changes that I told you about earlier, which is going down to control net and up the down sampling rate to at least four. And if that doesn't work, you can also click on low VRAM, but that should help you out. All right, so now we're gonna double the size, which is already 4096, which look pretty good, right? So once you do that, scroll to the top and click generate. All right, it's now done. And just, just for reference, it took a long time. It took, I think it took like around over 20 minutes. I kind of walked away and came back a couple times, but it took about 20 minutes. And that's why I said it's very important to check your web UI user file because you want to make sure it's still going because it takes a long time so you want to know if it crashed so this is the image right here and it's 63 megabytes and it's an 8192 by 8192 which is insane quality so let's open it up and zoom all the way in and Look at that. There is zero. There is no pixelation. You could zoom all the way in. And there are some artifacts here with the eyes. And this is when you get the details so fine that you can come up with these kind of uh, errors. But look at the quality of this. And look at this. This is insane resolution. Look how close I am. I'm like right up in her face, like right in her nose. And um, there is no pixelation. I mean, you would have to go like this close to see some pixelation. And that's pretty insane. That's 8192 by 8192. So that's that's a big image. Now let's compare that with our original image. So this was the original image and it's already faded and we, we haven't even zoomed in yet. And uh, look at that face. We've come a long way. Now let's look at our first upscale, which was the times two, which made it from 512 to 1024 to 1024, 
with the most important fact that it was a latent upscale, so it fixed a lot of the details. So if you didn't know, this is the way to fix your pictures. And if your pictures are really bad, this is the way you can actually make it look beautiful. But you can see, like as soon as you zoom into like right here, like it starts to fall apart. And then even here, it's just kind of, you can tell that it's starting to get pixelated and the details are not so clear. So this is the 1024 by 1024. And then we did a four times scale with control net. And this is what we got. And this is a pretty good picture. And this is already high def enough. And this is probably as far as I would normally go. But if you zoom like about right here, this is when you start to see things kind of like pixelate, but it's still kind of really hard to tell. You have to be really looking to see the pixelation up here. And here again, I zoom in and then you can see the pixelation around the eye and around this area. But I mean, that's that's super close. I mean, you should see pixelation in most pictures, but not this one. Now this is the 8192 by 8192 and you zoom all the way into her face. Like you can go this close and you don't see anything. I mean, maybe you see it, I don't see it. Um, that is pretty high detailed. This is the kind of pictures that you could print out. But look how amazing this picture looks. Something very important to take note of is that you want to do all your inpainting before you blow your picture up past 2048 by 2048 because then you can't send it back in and do inpainting by, by conventional means. You will actually have to do some workarounds and get some extensions probably. But um, yeah, not by default. You can't just drag in. Uh, 8192 by 8192 and start inpainting on it. If you can do it by default, let me know. I would like to know your secret. So take that into consideration. Are you going to spend a long time redoing the picture like I am? Just do your inpainting before you upscale and you'll save yourself a lot of time. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you today. And I wanted to show you how to go from a picture like this to a picture like this where the details are super high quality, 8192 by 8192. Alright, I hope you liked the video and if you learned something or if this upped your upscaling game, please leave a thumbs up, it helps me out a lot. Also, take it easy. Bye.